Good morning, everyone. Wow. Yeah, it's 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 been a a really kind of amazing morning, actually, or week, um, because as Jeff mentioned, these interviews or these broadcasts that David's been doing, the one he mentioned with Derek Bros was absolutely dynamite yesterday. And, and then he's got the other one today, the Awaken to Love conference, and that they, they've lived in my heart. They've been for me to really take on fully. And so my focus has been so fully there and they've been bearing such fruits, holy encounters, miracles galore. And um, so my focus has been there all week and I've been just trusting like, okay, I've got this show this weekend. What is it gonna be about? And usually there's a strong theme like, ah, this moment is your miracle or sound of silence or something. And, and it didn't drop in until four o'clock this morning. <laughs> Literally 4 a.m., I'm awake. Okay, what is it going to be about Holy Spirit? And so I've been taking the morning to feel that. And um, I've been pretty emotional all morning, actually, because I discovered I actually feel this very deeply. And rather than wanting to lead with the form, I really want to share with you from my heart what feels so important, actually. Um, and I, I found myself just in my PR role here, as perhaps you're aware of, I found myself sharing it with others like, no, we really need to let people know the holidays are coming, the holidays are coming. And this morning it hit me and I was like, well, maybe it's for me. So I'm really um, moved to be able to share with you today about how to use the holidays for your awakening, because they can be um, I mean, they can be used by either the Holy Spirit or the ego, and they're just rich, absolutely rich with forgiveness opportunities. So without further ado, I'd like to invite you to join me today on the gift as we look at the holidays retranslated. Okay, well, here we are. And um, yeah, as I said, this just struck me right down deep this morning. And I've been thinking about it for the past few weeks. And yeah, there's just been a number of pointers actually over the last little while, including last night. The last one just came, was driven home for me with. Um, these topics, family, you know, holidays are a time when your family dynamics are going to be heightened and they're going to emerge. It can be a time of loneliness and depression. It can be um, a time where the focus is on the form, like leading with the materialism or reciprocity. And we don't want to focus on those. But basically, I just wanted to share that the richness of the holidays is because you're going to see all of the blocks in your mind to where you're at with your family, um, what you believe about um, like giving and getting, uh, what Christmas is. I mean, this is literally, if you believe in Christmas or if that's the, the faith that you practice or have practiced, if that's where you're coming from, Christmas is literally the birth of Christ. And what does that even mean? So I'm here to share with you today because I want to learn what that means. But more than that, um, I want to share that the first or the last six months before I came to the community here was a very deep time of unwinding for me. I just found the course or it found me. And um, I had very, very rapidly after that time, I let go of my job. I sold all my belongings. Um, and I just leapt. Like I, I was reading the course many, many hours a day. And then it came in that when all the money started draining away, what was I going to do next? So I ended up going to live with my parents who were wonderful. And I moved my two cats and myself over into my parents' house. And we stayed there for six months where I was very aware that it was going to be a deep time of forgiveness um, because that was all I was interested in at that point. And that is in my mind, I think, because one of the things I did during that time, just before I moved, actually, was I had these two mighty companions that were very deep into the course with me. 
And um, they, we sat one day just before I moved and we made this prayer together. This is the leap into the unknown. It's known that this is going to be rich with forgiveness opportunities. So let's use it for that. And so we did. And I made myself a toolkit, a mind support toolkit of all the things I could do when I knew I would slip and fall. I knew I would trip. And so that's what I want to offer today, more than just a holiday toolkit to, to share that this is actually an important time of strengthening your practice. It's not a time to slip and fall, and, or slip and fall if you want, but know that there's resources to help pick you up. But um, that because we're going into this holiday season, and that can mean any number of things. You know, it can just mean if you live in America, it can mean Thanksgiving, it can mean whatever your faith whatever faith you're coming from, um, perhaps before A Course in Miracles has landed in your life, if that's even where you're at. But there's this old patterning and conditioning with what it, maybe it's Christianity or Judaism or anything, really. But this is the time when people start to go a little nuts. And I say that for myself because this is when my patterns emerge. I found out last night that my uncle died. And at first I just went, oh, and then it hit me like this heartbreak came in because it's the time of the holidays and there's actually just this feeling of um, he never knew how much he was loved. Like I never got to share that with him. And that was one of the pointers that really led me into, for me it's family, which is very strong. Around the holidays, we all come together and, and I live here now and this is my family too. And so, like, how do, you, how do you work through the holidays with your family in a way that's very healing and nourishing for your mind? How do you walk with Jesus through the holidays? So, if you're tuning in here, you're already tuned into one of the resources that we have available. And I don't want to lead with these resources. I really want to share with you that they're there to support your mind, to help you lead the holidays your whole life. It's not even about the holidays, but to help you lead your life with content, not form. So I've had this movie in my mind the last few weeks called Family Stone. And I don't know if you've seen it, but it's fantastic for looking at family dynamics. And it's just, I had this clip I wanted to play for you. And it's like, um, we'll maybe put it in the chat so you can watch it on your own. But it's this picture of how you come with this idea of uh, the family comes together and you have this idea of the perfection and oh, I'll bring this gift and um, I'll impress my boyfriend's family and all of this stuff and everything goes wrong. And it's got that fun Christmas music playing in the background so there's an irony to it all. But actually what the clip shows is that, um, and I hope we can put it in the chat, but the clip shows actually that it leads you down into the deeper dynamics of I'm, I'm not good enough for, for your family and all of this stuff. So all of these things are just waiting to be uncovered during this time. And um, MWGE is one of the things I wanted to share with you about too because you can use movies to help you through the holidays. You can use them to um, become pointers into these deeper dynamics and... Um, yeah, I don't feel like I want to spend much time on it, actually. MWGE is available. There's movies like Family Stone there. In fact, that whole movie is there if you have an MWGE subscription. And uh, there's a number of other ones um, that you can, you can watch there for your awakening. Yeah, I've got no idea where this program is going, but I feel to share with you even just briefly about some of the other... Um, resources that we have, Spiri, of course, keep Spiri in your back pocket. This is going to be like your go-to. Um, keep your mighty companions close, basically. Spiri is your mighty companion. If you've never used Spiri before, it's this chat bot that helps you work through upsets in your mind. So um, yeah, I've just found having these things fresh in my mind and at the ready helps me actually to stay more miracle-minded. Like I know that the blocks are going to come up and I know exactly where I can go to when they do. So Spiri. And of course you can join us here every Saturday and every or Sunday and every other day of the week now for Spiri TV where we've got this incredible showcase of shows 
that, um, oh, great. We're on Spirit here on Facebook. But uh, we've got this incredible showcase of shows that um, hopefully like this show and many, many others will be a lift for your mind and a reminder of purpose um, to help you lead with the content. So I'm going to let you explore Spiri. I'd love to let you explore Spiri TV. Um, as Jeff has shared, I think, last week, and I'll share now, you can find all of our shows now on Spiri.ai. It's going to be the home. Here we go, Spiri.ai. It's the home of our forthcoming new website where all of our content will be consolidated. But right now you can find um, players on here, these video players, where you can watch all of the shows here. It's just one spot that you go to. Um, and we have a number of events coming up too, but I just need to pause here for a minute because I can't lead with that. I just really want to connect with you guys. I actually feel like I would love to hear from you guys if you've got anything on your heart or any questions or anything like that. Just take the risk here of, I've got no idea where this show is going. Hi, Mary. Hi there. Um, <clears throat> so this whole topic, I just, I sent a brother and, uh, and sister-in-law off just a few minutes ago and have been inundated with family celebrating Thanksgiving. We didn't celebrate till yesterday. And it was really, I mean, you're speaking to a topic about holidays and family that uh, my heart is pounding because right <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to say. However, um, it has been um, kind of, not exactly choppy waters, but, but, this, um, but this play between form and content for me. Um, we do this annual thing. Every, people fly in. There's only about 14, 15 people. We play games. We do all this. We have a wonderful time. And I guess what I'm trying to get into is that I struggle a bit. Um, oh, I, I can see myself getting, <laughs> um, getting tied into something here um, because I love my family. And it's almost as if um, I have to give them up or give up our good times or give up, give up the bonds that are there. Um, and, and I know that's a misunderstanding of what's going on. Um, and at the same time, there's this teeter totter kind of between, um, as I say, form and content and, um, oh geez, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're not into Christmas and all this other stuff, but we, there's so much love already there. There's so much love already there in content. And then I'm kind of within myself fighting with, with the form. Like the form is not okay, <laughs> even though there's so much love there. Um, so I'm not sure if there's a question in there anywhere, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it right now. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Mary. Yeah, I feel like that that's even what it's bring up, bringing up for me this year, too. Just, I mean, it might not be as intense as when I lived with my parents that year, but it's just this feeling of, like, how do I do this? Like, how do I do the holidays with Jesus? Like, how do I do that? There's such, um, such a, uh, I don't want to say strength, but there's so many distractions, and there's so much that um, is going to hook, whether it's family or presents, oh, I didn't get so-and-so a present, you know, like anything, everything. There's just so much that's built into this. Um, you know, everything leads to Christmas through the whole year. At least that's the way that it was in my life. What, what do I want for Christmas this year? And, and then there's that glee on Christmas morning. Or as a little kid, there was a glee seeing the presents under the Christmas tree. And then it was the glee of just coming together with everyone. But... I think what the invitation is with Christmas now is um, like the Christ is born in our heart every time we accept the correction. And with the last little while that I'd spent with my parents, at that, uh, during, during that time I was living there, 
I just actually remember it being a time when I could relax into holy encounters and just be very, very present with not compromising on the Christ in my heart and enjoying what came my way, uh, all the people getting together, the food that was served, the, the gifts, whatever it was, like there's still an appeal of that for, for me. And I think what was important was the prayer in my heart, just going towards it with this intention of like, okay, I'm, I really feel like I like what's going on here, but you're, I, I know I'm getting hooked into a number of things and you're telling me there's another interpretation for all of this. So I'm just going to trust you and take my baby steps with all of this because, um, you know, one thing would clear and the next would come in and the next would come in. But that's why I say, like, have your spirit ready, you know, like have your tools available so that you can receive the retranslation. Um, and I, I mean, I join you in that. I don't want to come at this feeling like I'm a healed mind because it's still, it's very fruitful for me too. It's, it's uh, like I said, it's the topic on my heart this morning. Like Jesus, show me what it is to have Christmas with you. Like really beyond the form of everything, show me actually something that's going to be more fulfilling than all the trappings that the world would offer as a substitute for the, this movement in the mind towards the correction. So, thank you, Mary. Thank you. I love what you're saying, too, about um, this feeling of sacrifice, because this is what's offered as a substitute for this movement in the mind, and feeling in the heart is all the family coming together and receiving lots of gifts, and I keep thinking about Christmas here, because that's just what I grew up with, but obviously apply this to whatever faith feels right for you. But, um, yeah, I had a, a passage come to my mind this morning. It's actually the passage, one of the passages that's like the, the theme for our upcoming online retreat. So, obviously, if you feel to set your mind in the right direction um, or what could be a helpful direction, I really strongly recommend this online retreat coming up in um, just like a week or two, December 7th through the 9th. It's... Um, I keep thinking of it as our Christmas retreat, and it's, it's December 7th through the 9th, but there's this feeling I have about it that it's actually a catalyst for this feeling that I'm having, like, I want to do these holidays with the Christ. I want to lead with the content, and maybe this is a, a helpful way for me to start that, to learn more about what Christmas is and invite that into my heart. So I have my course book here. And as maybe you know, I like to read to you all lately. So let me find the part. It's actually not from the Christmas as the end of sacrifice section. It's actually from um, the littleness versus magnitude section where I found Christmas as well. And the part I'd like to read to you. In this season, Christmas, which celebrates the birth of holiness into this world, Join with me, who decided for holiness for you. It is our task together to restore the awareness of magnitude to the host whom God appointed for himself. It is beyond all your littleness to give the gift of God, but not beyond you. For God would give himself through you. He reaches from you to everyone, and beyond everyone to his son's creations, but without leaving you. Far beyond your little world, but still in you, he extends forever. Yet he brings all his extensions to you as host to him. Is it a sacrifice to leave littleness behind and wander not in vain? It is not sacrifice to wake to glory, but it is sacrifice to accept anything less than glory. Learn that you must be worthy of the Prince of Peace, born in you to honor, in honor of him whose host you are. You know not what love means because you have sought to purchase it with little gifts, thus valuing it too little to understand its magnitude. Love is not little, 
and love dwells in you, for you are host to him. Before the greatness that lives in you, your poor appreciation of yourself and all the little offerings you give slip into nothingness. Holy child of God, when will you learn that only holiness can content you and give you peace? <laughs> so I feel like when I started um, really heavily working with the idea of the holidays in my mind and my family at that time, and even now, it's here now, I was delighted to find that the holidays were absolutely ripe with reminders. Like, listen to, listen to some Christmas songs. I challenge you to listen to some Christmas songs, like, O oh, Holy Night and Silent Night and O oh, Come All Ye Faithful. Like, I just was blown away by how much I had never heard. And as I started listening to just the radio, you know, let's say I was going out with my parents shopping for some Christmas presents and suddenly on the radio, there's this song, Oh Holy Night, and it just floors you. Like, it's here now. Like, the Spirit is really wanting to come in with this retranslation. He's wanting to walk with us and show us something that's far beyond these little gifts because we don't, we don't know what there is beyond it. So... Um, yeah, but particularly I was inspired to let you know about the Christmas music because it was so delightful. And um, Stephen, I think I heard that you had your hand up, so I'd, I'd love to invite you on the show. I, oh, hang on, let's unmute you first. Can't hear you yet. Good? Yes. Okay, um, thank you so much. Uh, the whole um, holiday theme, and I, 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 can, I, I resonate with what you're sharing because I, I believe it's an opportunity. It's like a concentration of sorts of which thought system you're going to go with. And if I, if I go with that ego thought system, then it's, it's sadness, depression, loneliness, uh, you know, just all of that. However, if I choose the other teacher, I find that it's an opportunity, like you're sharing, to just step in. I had a, a wonderful experience on, on Thursday, Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm an empty nester, and so my kids are kind of doing their thing, and we just have an agreement that they'll do their thing with respective families and things going on. We'll connect another time because we're always connecting, so just do their thing. So I, I go to a local restaurant um, here, and uh, they have a wonderful um, Thanksgiving meal, and we'll just enjoy that. But uh, as I'm entering, as I'm heading into the restaurant, I see a, a couple, an elderly couple, and it's a, and it's a, a, a woman, and, and the man apparently had some kind of a stroke or something. She's just really helping him to, to get into the restaurant, and they were just wonderfully dressed. And I just felt this love. I could see the love of her just taking care of him. And I looked over at him, and I just, I just had this big old smile on my face as, as what I was witnessing. And he just smiled back like he recognized me. He's like family, like he knew me. Some, somehow he knew me, and I just smiled and waved and she said happy thanksgiving and just kind of went into the restaurant of course on on the holidays you can see it you can see which thought system really is um at, at work in your own mind and so i'm going through my meal and having fun with the server and just um really just appreciating everything um on my way out the restaurant before i go out i hit the men's room and, and that woman um that, that was helping her husband she's standing outside the men's room waiting for her husband and so I saw, I saw that, and as I, you know, I go into the men's room, and he, I, I see he's in there, and um, just kind of take note of that. And as I'm coming out, she, we engage in conversation, and it was just a wonderful conversation, because I just stopped and asked her, you know, hey, chit-chat type of things, but you could feel it was just, they're going about their day, and they're just, she's just feeling like they're going to see their kids, they're going to go see a movie, we talked about movies, and how wonderful the season is, and all of that. And then as I'm walking out the restaurant, I see uh, another couple coming in, but this time it's a, a son, probably in his mid-40s, helping his father, who had to be late 80s or something, just with a cane, just slow, slow, slow pace. And just that scene overwhelmed me. I went to my, my car, And I just wept. I 
And, and I realized that's it. That's the only purpose we're here is to love one another and to allow this body to be used to communicate that love. And I just felt so full of thanksgiving to know this, to realize this, to sense this, and to have that awareness to see this and to allow it to echo in, in my mind. And to, uh, to your point, Kristen, to, to allow these holy days, they're all holy, there are no holy days. It's part of, it's, you get it, you get it. But to allow the music to come through however it wants to come through and allow these songs, Oh Holy Night, allow all the, all the trees and the ornaments and to, to consider and to ponder that the gift here, which is to just to give us another concentrated classroom to choose and to allow that concentration just to come through. And I just want to say thank you. And that when, when I do choose that, it's, it's magnificent, it's wonderful, and it's, just, it's a, just a dance, and you're never alone, and you're just in the content all the time. And when I don't, well, I, we know the fruits of that. And then you just choose again. It's not even complicated. Yeah, just choose again. And there's so many wonderful tools here. And I, was, um, I kept pressing the snooze button this morning, thinking, yeah, okay, yeah, you want to, want to get in, get up, get on time or anything. And then it's finally like, okay, you really got to get up to get to, to come here to watch this, to watch you and watch the show. And it was just funny watching me scurrying around. I was just laughing, thinking, oh, get, get to, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be right. Just jump in, just get this content and, um, and, and begin again. Go, go for it. So anyway, thank you. I don't bother too much, but I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. What a delight. What a delight. Yeah, I'm just reminded of... Um, there was a, a book that I read a number of years ago. It blew my mind wide open. And there was a line in that book that reminds me of what I want to hold in my heart for these holidays is that... Um, hmm. I don't even know how to share this with you guys, but I'll try it anyway. <laughs> this woman had a deep, deep love for one, one person. And um, then she had a baby. And that part is not so important. But what struck me so was that the way that she described it was that it wasn't as if it was as if her heart grew to encompass them both. She didn't think she could love any more than this one that she loved. And suddenly there was this expansion of her heart and it encompassed more than just one. So I feel like that's the message the Spirit has been trying to teach me, with my family at least, around the holidays. You know, we have these special times with these special ones, but what if every day could be Thanksgiving, like you were saying, Stephen, where that the actual feeling of thanksgiving is abundant in your heart and you're just giving it away and every day is like that every day is like christmas every day you wake up with that glee of i wonder what i'm going to find under the christmas tree it's not a real christmas tree it's the christmas tree that in that lives in the heart like what are the gifts available for me today what can i give so I feel really inspired to extend this invitation to you all. I would like to spend the holidays with you. I would love for us to stay connected on Facebook. I want to hear your holiday miracles, your holy encounters, anything you feel to share. I just want to stay connected with you all. And um, yeah, invite us to do this together with Jesus. So... I guess just to close out, um, you're hopefully going to find some links in the chat here for like a holiday toolkit, because that's what I feel is really helpful um, as we go into this holiday season. So you've got Spiri, you've got these Awakening TV shows, you've got our online retreat coming up. If you want to start the new year in a new way, like with a new kind of resolution, 
I looked up resolution this morning in the dictionary, and it, it spoke of determination and resolve and certainty and clarity and an answer. Then um, I invite you to our Sound of Silence uh, retreat happening over the new year. So you, you spend New Year's together as your first night together and then launch into this gorgeous time where you just get to drop into silence guided, um, facilitated uh, meditations, um, facilitated uh, structure. That's what I'm going for, to help you really drop in and spend some quality time with yourself. Like that's, that's the kind of resolution I want to make for this new year. So, so many tools available. Um, just really want to stay connected with you guys. It's such an honor to be here and feel like I can come and share my miracles and my explorations and just do it together. So thank you so much for spending this morning with me on The Gift, and I'll see you next week.